What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuild. In today's episode, I'll share with you guys my new project over here. This right here is my newest project. It is a manual lathe by the brand name Modern. I believe this is an American company, but either than that, this is a manual lathe, which is very similar to most manual lathes you can see out there in any machine shop. If you guys want to see more content on this lathe, please hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And as always, stick around. On the left, it's very similar to any other lathe setup. We have our headstock on this side, which consists of the spindle, which is our main feed. Then we have our speeds and feeds on the top, highs and lows, and some other adjustment down below. Further down to the bottom, we have other adjustments, which will be helpful for cutting threads and so on. So this right here is the main part of the machine. Down below, on this side, underneath this cover, lies the electric motor. So it's very grimy down here. I'm gonna have to have a look at that and make sure everything is clean so the belts don't slip while this machine is running. This machine is in fairly decent condition, but it's been sitting outside for a couple weeks under tarp and it's collected some surface rust. No worries, I will take that all off and I might have a perfect method here in the new future to remove that rust. In the middle of the machine, we have our tool sled. This consists of many different parts. So we have on the top a tool holder. We have our cross carriage, which moves forward and backward. We have our main sled, which moves left and right. And this right here is the main part to machine anything that rotates over there in your chuck. Off to the far right, we have our tail stock. So when I turn this in and out, the the tailstock quill will move in and out and as you guys can see there are a couple measurements right here um, this is very handy if you have a steady rest in case a part is far too long so you can put it in the chuck on the front and have the steady rest in the back so you got so you can machine basically an axle a crankshaft or something in that manner something that's very long um, which protrudes or sticks out of the chuck a little bit too far so either than that i'll give you guys a walk around on this side um, this is supposedly a one and a half meter bed right here. So that means you can move your tools one and a half meters. So what that means is moving it from the chuck from the surface over here, one and a half meters all the way back over here. Um, that's a, the given length and that's a very nice length to machine with. So on the back end of the machine, we have the electrical panel, which is hidden behind that. But then we have our electrical hookup, which is down below. Um, we have three wires coming out, or possibly actually four. This is set up for 220. So I'm going to have to convert that in the shop to 220. And then after that, we're gonna need a VFD drive because I do not have the proper power source, which this machine would need. So with the VFD drive, you can convert it to 220 over here. And since this is a three phase, we can then run this machine inside the shop. Behind this machine, we also have our chip bed. Uh, this lies beneath. So whenever you're machining on the top, on the chuck in this area, all the chips will fall basically behind and collect down below in the chip bed. The chip bed isn't the nicest currently. Uh, these machines have uh, a lot of Bondo, since they are cast machines, they have a lot of Bondo, so you guys will probably see white, red, and blue. Blue is the color, red is possibly a filler, and white is another type of filler. So we have quite a bit to do down there, especially where the chips go. We have our drain over there on that side, as well as some more power. So that's power in and the cable runs up to our work light. The work light is on the top right here. So that basically means I could work at night. <laughs> and then the other connection that we have on our sled is coolant, which is very nice. That's already plumbed in. So the drain is over there and we have coolant. That means we can cool down parts while we're machining, which is very nice to have. 
on the rear end we also have some other functions for the tailstock uh, this right here is to lock the quill and this right here is to lock the tailstock onto the bed other than that there's not much on the back end but i will share with you guys a part which i have on top of the machine right here this part which i have in my hand right here i made myself uh, this was not done on this machine but this was done on a cnc lathe um, this is basically what you can achieve with a manual lathe a cnc isn't any faster or better um, if you know your manual lathe you can do this just as good on the manual this is the part i just shared with you guys a very standard part nothing too serious the surface finish is quite nice um, there was on the drawing a certain roughness which i had to achieve so this is very smooth uh, this is very hard material as well and it's a very nice finish but this part is just very simple it has a shoulder in the back i have uh, two chamfers left and right of the shoulder we have a fitting right here or a fitment and then we have the inner diameter which was bored out and on the inner diameter we have a chamfer as well as on the other side so this part right here will basically be produced on this machine once you chuck in your stock material you can machine all this down to here off to the shoulder the inside diameter right away then you'd flip it around and machine the second side of this and your part would be done if any of you guys are interested in cnc machining machining in general with milling machines or with lace please leave a comment down below i'll get back to you as soon as possible i will have some more content over here on the lathe and on some other future machines very soon so it's going to get really interesting i will be using this lathe in the near future to work on other projects i can always polish up a crankshaft here on the lathe i can make a shaft or something in that manner um, on a manual machine it's very easy to do stuff on a cnc machine you just have to know the programming side but that's not too hard either so we're gonna have some huge possibilities here to make some amazing stuff in the near future you may ask yourself what's my plan with this lathe behind me here my plan is to bring it inside the shop as soon as possible before winter comes around after that i'm gonna give it a deep clean so everything that's dirty rusty and grimy i'm gonna have to clean off and make sure this machine is picobello and everything is looking great once everything is cleaned up i can then go ahead and start disassembling some sub assemblies on this machine so we can clean everything up and make sure everything is within spec so my background is machining uh, you may ask yourself well why do i know so much uh, on the engine side of things i just learned a whole bunch of machines and how machines work and that's why i kind of went into the engine part of things and i know a little bit of both but i want to have this lathe up and running so when it comes down to uh, machining a crankshaft uh, touching up a crankshaft uh, remachining something uh, maybe even a cylinder I can hook it up here in the lathe and we can get it done here instead of bringing it to town and getting it done by somebody else so that will save me time and it'll save me a little bit money down the line I shared with you guys what I want to do up front so I want to clean everything and get everything working the way it should I want to clean the bed out and possibly give that a nice paint job on the bottom I want to clean up the sled which consists of the tool holder the x and y axis and everything around that area i want to go back to the uh, tailstock there's a whole bunch of work here even this tailstock is its own sub assembly so there's a whole bunch of parts in there the clamp on the bottom everything has to work we want our bed to look amazing um, there's just some surface rust right here but i don't want it to get worse so we're going to bring this inside the shop very soon uh, in between the casting here you guys can see it's chipped everywhere a whole bunch of grime just everywhere the wipers on everything are damaged so when this moves back and forth on the bed you don't want to have that scratching anything so i'm going to change all the wipers and there's just a whole bunch of maintenance on this machine um, a lot of people just uh, machine and leave chips everywhere on the machine but that's really not good for the machine because your bed is what gives you your accuracy your chuck is what gives you your accuracy so everything around the chuck has to be cleaned up uh, around the back we're gonna look at the motor we're gonna look at the belts we're gonna look at most of the threads in here in the back as well the electrical we're gonna go through that so all the connections are on point um, we have a taper attachment on the back end of the machine uh, 
not everything is complete over here so i'm gonna have to see if we can adjust something because a taper attachment is very nice to have when you need a taper on a shaft we're going to look at the wiring out back we're going to look at our coolant we're going to look at our light maybe we're going to change this for an led light we're going to see what we can do and especially just clean the machine i hope i was able to give you guys an insight on my new project over here this is a manual lathe i'm super excited to bring this finally into the shop i had a whole bunch of projects in the shop and now i'm finally gonna have some space to bring it in it's gonna be quite the task because this isn't a light machine we have some tractors around which will bring it in we're gonna see how we're gonna do it best without damaging anything over here so if you guys like the content please hit that like button down below consider subscribing if you haven't already and if you have any comments about the lathe or any other machines, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. So I hope I can get this machine inside the shop as soon as possible so I can get to work on it. I will give you guys some time-lapse videos on this. Um, I've seen some other people on YouTube do something similar and I find it really, really cool uh, to work on these machines. Uh, these machines produce all the parts that we see nowadays. Uh, there's just multiple options for this machine right here. I can't name you all of them. There's just so many options that you have on these machines, especially manual machines. You can do different setups. You can even take the tool holder off yourself. You can make customized tooling for this lathe. So there's so many options and there's so many products we can produce with this. And it's gonna be really interesting if I wanna optimize an engine in the near future or make something custom. It's always possible with this machine. This winter is gonna be very long. I know I have a whole bunch of projects laying around which I haven't showed you guys yet. So stick around.